Hi everyone and welcome back to YouTube. I'm Doug Miles. This is one of my favorite interviews I've done on my radio show here in Sarasota. I had the chance to talk with actress Elizabeth Rome, who was on Law & Order at the time we spoke. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and look for more of my interviews here on YouTube. Welcome back to the Suncoast Magazine. Great pleasure right now to uh, welcome uh, one of my favorite uh, TV actresses. Well, actresses are TV. She does all sorts of uh, acting. Elizabeth Rome. You all know her from her work on the shows like Law and & Order. And uh, she's uh, joining us now, uh, talking to us, uh, going to talk to us a little bit about the American Red Cross Celebrity Cabinet. Um, we'll find out about that as well. And Elizabeth, good to talk to you. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah, it's good to talk to you. You're up in uh, Washington, D.C. today? Yes, I am. I flew in to, uh, to do a couple of things. I'm a volunteer for the National Red Cross, and I have a couple of wonderful things that I'm, wonderful initiatives that I'm pursuing with them. One is a campaign that we created to inspire volunteerism called the Hometown Heroes Campaign. And a really good friend of mine who is a great photographer named Timothy Greenfield Sanders, he photographed um, several of the celebrity cabinet members, Vivica Fox and Jamie Lee Curtis, Marsha Gay Harden, Nikki Taylor, Sarah Evans, you know, the list goes on and on, just really, really wonderful people who are being photographed in black and white portraits with a hometown hero that's also a Red Cross volunteer. So they have a lot in common, and we're hoping that these, these posters, whether they be in magazines or billboards, wherever you may find them, may they, may they inspire <laughs> volunteerism in the nation. Well, that's great. I know the Red Cross has done such great work uh, for so many years, and going back to, uh, I don't know if they were in World War One, but at least World War Two, and, and every you know conflict since, and not just that time. I mean, 9/11. Uh, you know as well as I, I grew up up in New York. What great work they did during that whole, uh, you know, time we went through. So they, they're a wonderful organization, and I think people sometimes just don't remember exactly. You know, they they need funds to survive, don't they, and volunteers to survive. Yeah, absolutely, and that that has a lot to do with why I became a volunteer, because there's this sense that you know. To be a Red Cross volunteer, it seems like this, you know, I don't know, sainthood or something that's unattainable, and it seems larger than life. I mean, who are these people, and how could I be one of these people? And, you know, after having experienced 9-11 at home and seeing how, how strong of a presence the Red Cross was for my friends, all of us having just gotten out of college, not having a lot of money, a lot of different people were in different situations, but regardless, especially when people were in need, the Red Cross was there. And also personally, on another note, the Red Cross um, helped my mother in a time of need. Her house um, burned down in Missouri. She had a oh, farm, wow. and they provided her with a roof. So, you know, just really, really different points of view for different people in need, whether it be the way it is at Walter Reed this morning with their 200 strong volunteers that are there that are just handing out the necessities that, you know, might make the day easier, whether I got there and somebody needed pajama pants because they got they can walk today and they're feeling good and it's their first day to just kind of hang in the halls of the hospital, right, sure. but they need pajama pants, so the Red Cross is there to give them that. It's the human dignity that they offer and you know, whatever it is, whatever comfort they can, they give, and they give it across the nation and around the world. I've been in a hospital, and wearing that little uh, gown doesn't help. If you don't have anything underneath <laughs> right. it, so I know what you mean. It's not so dignified to uh, not really, to no. Show London and France. No. <laughs> now, you, you were shooting uh, Law and Order in New York during 9/11. Were you shooting that week when it I, happened? You know, we were on our summer break, but were ironically, you? Dick Wolf, who has his finger on the pulse of most things in, in storytelling. Um, we were about to do a movie, all of us Law & Order alums and current cast members, about a terrorist attack in New York City, and it would have thrown all of us together like a Sopranos episode, like, you know, 30 cast members, you know? <laughs> and here we were, and it actually occurred, surprise, surprise, you know, and we couldn't shoot, and we didn't shoot, and the project got, you know, canceled. Yeah. So I was there, and, you know, it was... Um, it was emotional, but, you know, again, over and over, for me, my personal experience as a, you know, young girl, kind of just, you know, the Red Cross, the Red Cross, the Red Cross. Sure. They were the people that were, you know, giving out vacuum cleaners and the true necessities. Oh, yeah, they did incredible. I was up there. I grew up up there, but I was up on yeah. vacation and just seeing, 
you know, the tremendous work that they did, all of the organizations, and uh, how the mayor, Giuliani, everybody just kind of pulled together. It was, uh, you know, a terrible circumstance, which never happened, but a lot of good came out of it as far as uh, seeing, you know, these organizations come together, right? Yeah, and just the sense of community in right. New York. But uh, that's what happened for me is I started to volunteer for the local chapter in mm -hmm. New York and was trained in disaster relief there and then reached out to the to the national office in D.C. And, and approached them really about this Hometown Heroes campaign. And, um, and then it just developed into a different, you know, bigger relationship. And thus I got to go to Walter Reed today. I had gone to Brooks Army Medical Center. Right a couple of months ago through the Friars Club and so I had reached out to the Red Cross to see if they could make it possible. And like I said, I mean, they're just doing everything from, you know, being the liaison for communication between, you know, families and service members and, you know, just, you know, providing them with phone cards so that they can be in communication and, you know, on and on. They are involved with, you know, helping veterans, helping families, and they're just there on a daily basis just you know, making sure that they have have what they need to feel good about themselves. It's